Hello, my name is Amit. I'm going to show you how to set up a very simple computational fluid dynamics case on uh, Ubuntu. Uh, I would be using open source softwares for that purpose and uh, this would be very simple geometry being set up for very simple flow problem. So first of all I need a CAD geometry creator. So I would uh, launch a program called FreeCAD which is freely available for um, Unix based systems, Ubuntu and Mac. So I'm going to start a workbench and uh, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to add a very simple geometry for example a cylinder which you can see uh, it's a cylinder with data of the cylinder being displayed here you see in the data of the cylinder that cylinder is about 10 millimeters in height and 2 millimeters in radius and then uh, so be it and then I would add a cone for example hold on I guess you're not able to see that yeah so I added cylinder from this menu and then I am adding a cone. You see the cone has automatically been added here. You can see in the list of the uh, shapes and as well as uh, you can see the geometry here. Uh, if you look into the data of the cone, it says that it has a height of 10 millimeters and a radius of around um, 2 uh, millimeters, top radius of around uh, 4 millimeters and the bottom radius of around 2 millimeters so I'm going to change it so that becomes a uh, usable case for us so I'm going to make this as 3 and uh, this as uh, the top one I would uh, leave it at 4 I think that should serve my purpose and then I'm going to subtract the cylinder from the cone so I select cone first then cylinder and then go to the boolean operation boolean operation here and now I have a cone subtracted by a cylinder inside so you can see it from these views how does it look and I guess that should be it so I'm going to save it save as a converging diverging shape and then I'm going to save mesh file as well. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to export this as a uh, export this as a shape that will be recognizable by the meshing software. For example, a step file or an IGES file. So I'm going to choose step. I would export as a step file. You see here. Yep. And I, I'm going to use these pre-used files just to dump this data. And now I have uh, a geometry. So in order to mesh this geometry, I need to have a meshing software. And for that, the well-known GMSH mesher is here, uh, where you can first uh, open that file, open the file that I just saved, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the stuff file I just saved which is this file, I already have a mesh file you see here, I'm going to, I'm going to first go and delete that mesh file for you, so that you get to see the real work. So I just have, um, just have a stuff file here, and uh, I see here now I just have the stuff file nothing else I'm going to delete all other files at this moment so all you see is, is basically um, kind of rigid rigid stuff file nothing else oh who am I kidding I have another file okay now I should be clean enough okay so I am going to go and open that file first. Oh, the stuff file! I got the stuff file. Now you can see the nozzle as as you were seeing previously. 
you can also go to the options and uh, and see the visit uh, check on the visibility so once you check on the visibility you see see the mesh here okay now I'm going to add some some basic shapes to it by the way uh, just to, just to tell you that in order to mesh you really don't need to do anything apart from pressing these three buttons 1d 2d and 3d which does exactly as it says 1d meshing 2d meshing and 3d meshing so I go 1d then I go 2d and I go 3d and the mesh is created but as you know this is too coarse to be worked uh, for a CFD software or to get any reasonable solution so what I'm going to do is that I'm first going to uh, add a surface so I choose this surface press the E button create a new geometry file and that surface has been tagged as some surface which you don't need to need no similarly I would do to the other surfaces as well as to this surface and all the surfaces have been saved I just do the volume addition now and I check this and that is all my volume is set but now I need to mesh but before that before meshing to go to the tools and go to the options and uh, go to the mesh options and check on the element size factor this is exactly where the element sizes are going to be finer so I make it really really small something like 0.15 or so and uh, I'm going to check a few options as well like optimize the quality of tetrahedra and all once I've done with that, I go and press the 1D, 2D, it's doing the 2D, it's taking longer time now, as you see. And then the 3D, it's again doing the 3D, then optimizing the 3D mesh. And now you have your mesh ready. You don't have to do anything apart from saving this mesh. So now you see that mesh have be, has been saved. Once the mesh is saved, you go to an already set case which is just just like copy of uh, copy of an icofoam example problem which you can find in the open foam installation um, examples directory what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm gonna delete all the files that I've already generated previously oh there you go so now you just have the basic files that you get when you start okay so this is the basic folder structure that you get when you start your um, example problem so I'm going to uh, get the um, mesh file from the folder just above it I can I can show you that I have just generated it so you see this mesh file has been generated just at this moment and I'm going to import that here So now you have that mesh file here. All you need to do is you need to convert this. So you have four patches here: patch zero, patch one, patch two, and patch three. Uh, by the orientation, you can say that the patch zero is basically the side face, outer side face patch three is the inner side face and patch zero uh, patch one and two are basically outlet and inlet so I'm going to show you how how my folder structure looks you'll have a polymesh folder and you'll have many files inside that 
let me just open and show you what kind of boundary files so you see the number of faces here and by the number of faces you may guess what is what and then I go and uh, I check my running running control file which is in the system directory uh, control detect and there you go you have to run it for around 50 millisecond and your the time step is 0.1 millisecond isn't that too small I think it should be fine and then I go and run uh, I think I should be fine with this so let me try it's running quite fast and it should take like uh, around two minutes to run all such cases if it runs successfully which I hope by the way my boundary conditions were stored in the zero slash p and zero slash u uh, folder uh, which I forgot to show you but uh, you should be familiar with that or you can read it on the open folder home tutorial website and meanwhile it is doing all those you can see what what folders it has generated by oh my god so many folders uh, because I probably wrote it more frequently than it should have but since we have already have this this much data so we can you know afford to plot it for you so here I go I start paraform start the case you see the same geometry here if you wish to see the mesh you can do that and uh, you may plot by something say uh, not the cell values but the point values for example uh, the point values of mesh uh, you may go to the next time step and then you can see how the pressure values are propagated I think I am not to plot it properly here so you see how the pressure value is being oh the pressure started from this side I'm looking at the wrong side oh, of course this is okay so after certain time steps you see that all the pressure values are updated and you may also plot the velocity there and uh, that is it I think the solution is uh, not exactly correct I think there might be something wrong with the setting but I guess you got the idea about how to do it in principle so thank you very much for watching